Hi everybody, welcome to Northwood Farms Vlog Entry 41 Part, well Part B I think because Kip's doing a Part A. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Part B, okay. Well we'll give him the Part A. Okay. Yeah, and I'm Emma. And I'm Michael. And this is Degamo, who is Michael's five, four, four year old. Four or five, Lusitanum. Yeah, and just tell the fast story. Fast story. Uh, I wanted to buy a Lusitano like three years ago, so I called this lady. She didn't want to sell any, but then her farm went under, and I got him for pennies on the dollar, and he's cool. He is amazing. I got to ride him um, the first night, right? I think I'm only like the third person um, to get to ride this horse, which I wasn't going to ask, but he's awesome. He just is really, really cool, and um, I think Michael should keep him forever or give him to me. <laughs> well, she's trying to convince me of that, but I don't know. So, so he's kind of brought up a lot of interesting things about well for me the most the most important thing about this horse is I'm learning what it should feel like because mm -hmm. um, he just does a lot of things naturally so um, learning what getting engagement really feels like in a stop and yeah, back up and all that because he just does it already <laughs> but like I was I was watching and I'm like why are you releasing for those things <laughs> And I'm looking for more, not realizing that it's already pretty well perfect sometimes. So, um, so yeah, just... it's good to have someone on the ground. And watching Emma ride him, I was like, wow, it, he does look pretty good. Just picking up with the lightest of, of a feel, he's right there. So It's always fun to have yeah. somebody else ride your horse that can, so you can kind of see a little bit yeah. of what, what he can do. He felt great, really nice. And that kind of brought up what were we talking about so we've heard a lot of really cool things a lot I mean Buck has talked about the differences between how you handle this what the feeling is for the person for riding in a snaffle bit versus a hackamore like the difference between it being a static feel and a live feel just stuff I have no idea and we're gonna have a truck going by in the background but <laughs> and so but talk about talk about the um, the releasing? Yeah, like the the, the gradients of expectation. Yeah, so I've really been um, trying to figure out what I'm to be releasing on at this stage. At the beginning, you know, you'd release with the, the slightest try and you continue to do that, but the slightest try is always getting more and more specific or it's more and more It's not just the slightest refined. try though, it's, it's... Correctness. Yeah, it's, per it's correctness, exactly. Yeah. So. Like, if you start out and you, you say, well, Buck says you just release every step when the horse is soft. But that could be so different from if when you're just starting to... When you're starting, your awareness of softness is pretty crude. But as you advance, softness has a lot of components to it. And if you're just releasing on that initial... Yeah drop of the pole or dropping the nose to, to turning loose the pole. of the jaw like the idea is that, anyway so it, that was then you could be releasing on less than the horse's best yeah you know? and so we kind of ended up like this horse would start um and be really correct yeah and then and then, kind and then of, i'd ask more and it kind of fall apart yeah, but then it. he was releasing on the more yeah. that was that was the thing so it, it's been really fascinating yeah. and then so on that same Topic. We've been ta we've been, you know, talking about how our expectations of ourselves. If you're really advancing, it's never going to get better. Like you're not ever going to. You actually start feeling like you're worse as you get better. Has been my experience. Right, anyway. and some of you know that as a new level of conscious incompetence. Um, and that is pretty much what it is. Uh, but Buck was mentioning that today and then what he said was all you do is you learn to manage the discontent which I thought was valuable because I think that's an additional way of looking at it other than just enjoy the journey it's great you know which it is and we love it but if you're truly For someone who's really particular and striving and driven and like not really ever satisfied you have to learn to be okay with being not quite totally satisfied and yet being content with with where you are. Well not content. I, Content's a word that Emily wants me to be to uh, find. <laughs> I need to learn sorry, to be content. <laughs> yeah, good luck. So manage the discontent. <laughs> yeah, manage so. the discontent, exactly. And and I just thought that that was a more manageable way to think of it than than to because if you are if if you're 
if you're okay with it and if you're content with it um, overall, then you're probably not advancing. But um, I think for me... I think you need to be pleased while being discontent with where you are. I was just going to say that. I was going to say that... You need to still be pleased with your horse, which is something I'm working on <laughs> currently as well. Oh my God, Michael, pet your horse! Pet your horse! <laughs> so I'm told that I need to treat my horse the way I treat my dog, because I, I pet dog my dog and praise my dog. Lisa, come here. Come here. We've got to show how perfect you are. You are. You can... Yeah. No. Oh. Okay. This is Liesl. She's a good girl. She's a good clinic dog. Even she Buck just, said so. She just sits there and minds her manners. But he says, he's really firm with the dog. He's like, hey, you, come here. Do this. Do that. And then when she does it, he goes, good. I'm like, just do that with the horse. That's all you have uh, to do. <laughs> so my animals are teaching me to be and, more content and pleased. Yeah. And well, you while, can at, be... while being discontent with little pieces along and the I, way. And I, I'm just so grateful to, to be here for sure because, you know, just getting to study correct movement over and over again by getting to watch Bach, specifically getting to watch him with Rebel, but then seeing how Ruben has, is improving um, and changing and how his footfalls change and what Buck is settling for now with Ruben versus what he would have a year yeah. ago um, has been really cool. Getting to watch, there's people in this clinic are pretty dang good yeah um, there's some you know, really advanced folks yeah so it's nice and then the h2 class so you get to watch a lot of interesting things and just even getting to watch 25 people doing a soft deal kind of at the same time and getting to watch where the horses are looking with their eyeballs we were talking yeah. about that right well and one of the early things you mentioned the hackamore snaffle there's some folks that have just gone into the hackamore so buck is mentioning things about that and yeah, what that's... they need to pay attention to mm -hmm. so lots of little interesting pieces yeah. there yeah definitely so it's been a good time? It has. Yeah. And this has gotten kind of long, it feels like. Yeah, I know. I think we're okay. But we hope everyone else is having a good week, although I can't imagine it's any better than this. Yeah. Really? We're having a good time. <laughs> so uh, we'll see everybody later. Have a good week. Bye.